Yeah. Hi, everybody. It's Eamon here with another podcast from Pat Monk Presents. And today we have a very special guest coming to us. Uh, it is Whitney from Orderly Health. Welcome to the podcast. How are you? I'm doing great. Great to be here, Eamon. Fantastic. Great to have you on. And I'm excited to hear what you have to share. And those of our listeners that maybe aren't familiar with Orderly Health, Give us a quick download on what it is you do and how you help people. Yeah, so Orderly Health is a healthcare provider data platform. Um, at our core, we work to make sure that patients can get to uh, a clinician, whether it's a physician or someone else that they need to seek care from at the right point in time um, and that they're the right person. And a lot of the provider data out there today is inaccurate, maybe up to 50%. So we're working with um, to empower healthcare payers, health systems, and other digital health companies to um, present this data in a more um, accurate way to patients. Fantastic, fantastic. And uh, I hear that you, know, you have a new product launch coming up soon. And tell us a little bit more about that. Yes, so Orderly Health has a database of all clinicians in the United States. So that's almost 6 million at this point. But what we found is that people also need to understand where those folks are working, who they're associated with. Dr. Smith works for Banner Health, for example. It really helps patients in their journey and understand um, who is working where and if that's a network for them. Mm -hmm. So that's coming out uh, That's coming out in just a few weeks, actually. And we're mm -hmm. very excited about it. Great. So by the time this goes live, it's uh, it's probably going to be live. So great. And with that as well, I mean, when you're reaching out to like 6 million different people, I mean, what different channels do you find yourself using? Is it mostly outbound or LinkedIn or Google or inbound, you know, driving people to the website? I mean, what's really working for you at the moment? Right now, our um, strategy, our growth strategy is really diversified, which is great, but it means we have a lot of things going on. So people find us through the website, which we have put a lot of effort in into the last year. Um, outreach, cold outreach by our sales team is still something that we're doing as a growing company. Um, but we are also getting um, quite a bit of traction around our content marketing and thought leadership. So we're always publishing things to show um, that we understand the problem that we are working to help our customers solve. And that's gone a long way. Fantastic. And like when you're saying content marketing, so people are coming to your, let's say your blog or to your website. I mean, how important is your website in converting those visitors into potential business or getting them on calls with your team? The website's very important. That's sort of like our front door, people call it, right? Our digital front door. If people are um, you know, kind of in the awareness stage of trying to understand what's out there and who it really is. The website is the first place that folks go other than social media channels. Um, and as a B2B SaaS company, we don't, we only focus on certain social media channels as well, because we're not a, a, a CPG company or an off the shelf product. So it's very important. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And like kind of uh, switching gears a little bit, let's say talking more, let's say more about you, Whitney, as a, let's say a leader within marketing and what you're doing. I mean, what keeps you busy on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, at Orderly Health? Yeah, so um, at Orderly Health, I'm the VP of growth. So for us, growth encompasses all go-to-market functions. So I am focusing on, I, I, on a daily basis have to explain the difference of what sales versus marketing is, right? Sales is a one-on-one -on -one conversation between two people. Marketing is a conversation between a company and an audience. So storytelling is key there. So really on the marketing side, being able to understand the story that we're telling, the people, the audience we're targeting and, and trying to tell that story to, and the channels that we're doing so, that takes a lot of time. So um, it's 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 both a cool thought project and a lot of creativity involved um, and a lot of storytelling. Yeah. And you know what? Storytelling is, you know, so key because, I mean, people don't like being sold to, but everybody loves a good story. <laughs> everybody loves a yeah, good story exactly. and engaging and, you know, connecting with people. So, and, you know, now that we're kind of moving on um, during our interview, what I want to do is ask you if it's okay, some rapid fire questions. So if you're ready... Let me know. Shoot. Let's do it. So um, very simple. Like what was the last book you read or currently reading? 
I am reading a book called 4,000 Weeks. It's um, called Time Management for Mortals. And it's about just how important it is to think about our life and um, focus on the important things that we want to get done versus, you know, cleaning out your inbox and getting um, getting done these like very small tasks that might not be actually fulfilling at the end of the day. Exactly. Because there's so many busy people. But when you look at it, like, what have we achieved? And I'm I'm taking notes here because I want to check that book out. <laughs> so I think that's it's good so far. I'm about halfway through. <laughs> yeah, but uh, that's that's good. Also, I mean, what um like if you're looking at what you're doing, like, is there anything that you find that uh, it kind of fits nicely into what the book you just said? But is there anything that you find that is taking up a lot of your time on a day to day basis that if you could wave a magic wand or something and automate that task to give yourself time back, what would that be? That is a great question. Um, I'd say administrative tasks of like coordinating logistics, booking meetings, et cetera. I know that there are things out there that do it, but they don't do it as well as humans. Um, if I could wave a magic wand that I don't have to coordinate that anymore, that would be great. Um, so if we could figure out a way to do it as well as a person can. Yeah, hopefully, if there's anyone listening into this podcast, there's a there's a call to maybe a next startup. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> being able to automate stuff like that, especially with AI and everything that's happening. So also, I mean, let's say if you're able to rewind, imagine it's your first day, your first week at Orderly Health. If you're able to go back and give yourself I don't know, a pep talk and give yourself, you know, some advice, what would you say to yourself or what would you do differently? That is a great question. I think if I were to go back, I would, um, I would say lean on lean on others more. You know, um, when I first joined Orderly, it was a, it was just a I was employee number sixteen or something. So pretty small company and has grown a bit. Um, and being able to lean on others, um, and when you're wearing a lot of hats, also take the advice of others is just a really good skill to have. And I think folks who are really driven sometimes forget that, including myself. Great advice. And especially when you're a smaller company is you you have multiple hats. And that's just the, the thing. It's not like when you're with a big corporate 500 company, you know, it's like you do one thing, you, you have multiple spinning, spinning plates <laughs> at the same time that you're taking care of. So what I want to do is uh, now, like, thank you so much for being on the podcast, but I want to give you the final word, Wendy. I mean, imagine if people forgot what we just spoke about. If there is one real point that you wanted to let them, wait, one thing to remember about orderly health, what would that be? For orderly, I think I would want people to remember that we're a company that's really focused on patients and um, how much that means to our mission every day. And to me, that's important because I started out my career in marketing as a CPG company doing mail marketing for products I didn't care about. And so as someone focused in this area, like having something that gets me up in the morning that's making an impact is just so important. And I would encourage other folks to make sure you're looking for the same because that's what's going to make your career sustainable in the long term. 100%. I, I, there we go. I, I feel like clapping for that because that's something I, I definitely really believe in and agree with. And I'm sure our listeners will as well. So uh, Whitney, thank you so much for your time. I'm sure our listeners will get a lot of value out of this. I'll definitely be checking out 4,000 Weeks, uh, that book anyway. And uh, thank you so much for your time. So everybody else, I look forward to seeing you on the next Pratmo Presents podcast. All the best and bye-bye.